Now it's time for Mr. Professor Andreas Koltai, National University of Public Service. Mrs. Mr. Professor, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, um, may I share my screen with you? All right. Okay. So, um, as you see, the title is here. It's uh, way too long. Sorry, sorry about that. But I, I'd like to talk about some issues which I think uh, um, connect us, all of us, not only only the members of this group, but all the European citizens and everyone who's interested in uh, in the public opinion and and the European free speech doctrine. And uh, finally, uh, in, in the last uh, couple of minutes of my presentation, I'd like to uh, give you a short uh, overview on, on what's uh, currently happening in, in Hungary. Um, yeah, so um, did, the, did the slides change? So you see my second one. Mr. Professor, yes, the slides. Okay, is thank you. Sorry, but I don't see what you're seeing, and and that's why I'm, I'm a bit uh, confused about it. So uh, I think um, uh, we can we can talk about uh, a general European doctrine of freedom of speech. Obviously, the specific rules of of uh, free speech uh, uh, can differ in in all European countries, but there are some common points and and serious overlaps. Uh, and the basics uh, are probably similar in all EU member states or generally in all European uh, countries. Uh, starting point is that the freedom of speech basically means the freedom of discussions on public affairs. That is the core of uh, free speech uh, protection. Uh, that is the, the, the type of content which are uh, uh, really uh, strongly protected in, in all uh, legal system in Europe. Uh, also, free speech is not without any uh, limits. So free speech can be defined through the limitations of this freedom. And, and generally, European uh, uh, legal systems tend to uh, balance uh, uh, in, on a on a case by case basis between freedom of speech and uh, human dignity, uh, I just uh, put the the most important uh, types of these limitations in in, in brackets on this slide. Um, also, we can talk about the uh, European doctrine of freedom of the press. Freedom of uh, the press necessarily means a different types of freedom, different uh, basic right than than freedom of speech. It's a truism that freedom of the press uh, serves democracy. Uh, if you read any scientific publication or if you read any of the decisions of the European Court of Human Rights uh, or, or a constitutional court decision in a, in a European uh, country, they all tend to reinforce this idea. Freedom of speech is, uh, is uh, a right that, that is protected uh, in order that democracy should be served by the press, by the media itself, which means uh, media has some duties and responsibilities. This wording came from the, from the uh, European Convention of Human Rights, Article 10. The, the duties and responsibilities of the press is to uh, cover issues of public interest, inform the people. Problem is with this approach is that uh, this is only a moral expectation, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you all uh, agree with this. No, uh, no media outlet has a legal duty to cover public issues or to to present uh, public issues fairly or, or or in a balanced way. That is only a moral expectation. Uh, and, uh, and not a legal one. Uh, in the case of broadcasting and media services, generally, the regulation is much more ex extensive. Um, there are some uh, specific regulation which, uh, which uh, aims to serve the public and thereby uh, serving democracy, but still the, uh, there's no duty to serve the public interest. So you can, you, you can freely uh, 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 launch a, a sports channel that shows only uh, sport or a music channel or whatever you want. There's no need, uh, no legal obligation to, to cover public issues. Uh, 
there are some very limited rules regarding this uh, this problem. Uh, right of reply probably is is uh, present in in uh, all our legal systems. Still, no duties, no 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 legal duties, but still uh, the press enjoys some legal privileges. Uh, protection of sources, protection against uh, uh, search and seizure by the authorities, exemption from testifying duties, access right, so on and so forth. Uh, these are privileges, these are extra rights provided for the press or the media only, and they all uh, aim to incentivize the press that they uh, uh, discuss issues uh, that are relevant for the, for the public sphere. Um, the role of legal regulation by the state is uh, uh, is uh, twofold. Uh, first, they they uh, need to set the the standards, set the standards for freedom of speech uh, and for freedom of the press. M try to maintain the right balance between freedom of and and human dignity. Uh, and doing by doing this, or or uh, when doing this, they they also uh, need to be aware of the the necessary procedural guarantees, independent adjudication, judicial review, reasoned decisions by the authorities, transparent decision making, and so on and so forth. These are the basic uh, constitutional uh, guarantees. Why is it relevant where, when we are talk about the uh, we are talking about the, the social media, social media platforms? Uh, usually we when we when we talk about the censorship of platforms uh, we we try to apply these free speech and and press freedom doctrines to this newly newly founded type of uh, of medium and uh, and facebook twitter google and all the others are um, reluctant to to acknowledge and to 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 uh, admit that these doctrines are relevant for for their work and for the for the everyday uh, existence um, social media can regulate the users uh, itself or themselves uh, this is what i call private regulation it's not regulation by the law or by the state these are privately regulated uh, legal um, 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 connections between the user and between the platforms Platforms set up their own free speech codes. They are similar to the proper ones, but uh, in, in many aspects, they are also different. They have their private adjudication system. Uh, you, several of, 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 the, of the presenters uh, before me already talked about these issues. Uh, so there's no need to, to replicate their, uh, their views and, and in, insights. Uh, the regulation of social media platforms with a view to press freedom doctrine is problematic in this way. Uh, currently, uh, duties and responsibilities in the case of online platforms or social media generally is not something that is visible from, from any legal system or from the jurisprudence of the ECTHR. Theoretically, we can talk about it, and there are some academic publications which raise, raise these, uh, these issues, uh, whether we can force the platforms to cover issues of public interest show daily news bits or or posts uh, for the users whether they should be forced or, or, or obliged to 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 show different sides of of public interest stories so on and so forth whether right of reply is applicable in a case of a, of a social media platform these are theoretical debates very important debates uh, the the positive law is not not does not uh, uh, affirms uh, that that uh, that these these obligations can be applied to to social media, which is a problem uh, because even if uh, individual media outlets do not have any uh, obligation to to serve the public or serve democracy, media market as a whole has at least has the opportunity to maintain a balance between individual interest groups, political parties, and, uh, and others. Uh, so if you're interested in what's happening in your country, you can buy two or three different newspapers, read all of them, and then you will have a, a, a diverse view of, of the same, same story. Maybe if, better if you buy only one newspaper, there's a high 
chance that it, uh, it will only uh, cover a story in a distorted way or in a partisan way. Uh, but media market as a, as a whole uh, is theoretically uh, uh, capable of achieving some kind of a balance between these uh, competing interests. But online markets are, tend to be extremely monopolistic and that's why uh, regulating or thinking about the regulation of Facebook, Twitter and, and the others is very uh, important uh, from, a, from a democratic perspective. The, the typology of, of, of the p potential platform regulation is just, it's just my collection, my, my list, uh, obviously. You can also compile your, your own. Uh, we, can, we can make a principal decision with, and, and say that there's no need to regulate, so no regulation at all. We, we can follow what, what was uh, published first time in the 90s. Uh, and, and think about social media as some kind of uh, uh, wild west of, uh, of the uh, United States without any uh, uh, specific regulation. This cannot work uh, fully because uh, the, the laws which have, which have general scope uh, obviously uh, can be applied to, to social media, but social media does not, not have a, a specific regulation uh, such as uh, broadcasting or or radio. Uh, a serious or, or, a, or, a, or a strict uh, legal uh, regulation similar to broadcasting regulation, probably something that uh, cannot work in the case of online platforms. Co-regulation is something that everyone tries to do in Europe. It's a joint effort uh, by market players, the platforms themselves and state authorities. The current e-commerce directive of the European Union uh, follows this way or the tries to tries to uh, um, regulate uh, in line with this approach there are some some uh, uh, signs which maybe show that there's a possibility to 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 choose the self regulation self regulatory system i don't really believe in this it it, it doesn't really work in a case of uh, printed press uh, not only in Hungary, but but uh, just remember the the, uh, the scandal in the United Kingdom uh, exactly a decade ago, uh, which just collapsed the the self-regulatory system of the of the press. Uh, and I don't consider that Facebook's oversight board is is a is a body which is uh, similar to the self-regulatory bodies because Facebook's oversight board is not independent at all. Uh, so it's a it's a kind of an internal self-regulation, which is a newly new development and something we we uh, didn't see before in the case of uh, traditional media. Private regulation probably will be present. Um, um, it's it's present elsewhere as well, not only in in the case of online platforms. But see the labor law. If you if you publish something on the internet uh, uh, that is not in line with your with your employers opinion probably you can get fired really easily everywhere in, in Europe and and this is uh, something that uh, that it empties the constitutional free speech protection similarly online platforms also by these private regulation uh, they all empty this constitutional free speech protection which is not a very attractive development if you're a, if you're a free speech lawyer uh, private law and con Contracts, law of contracts probably has a uh, can have a bigger role in the future in the case of platform regulation. Uh, by private law, by, by the civil codes of European countries, uh, the, the connection between the platform and the users can be regu regulated and, and the users, individual users, can be protected. Uh, this is we arrive now to, to the horizontal effect of basic rights doctrine, the, the German Drittwirkung, uh, which says that uh, users can uh, can invoke their the constitutional rights even in in private law uh, uh, in the situation where, where where private law governs the the parties' uh, uh, connections. Uh, back to the European values of free speech doctrine. Uh, just to remind us uh, of the problems, the, the platform, social media platforms um, 
uh, just brings to, to our life, um, the, the balancing between freedom uh, and uh, human dignity, freedom of speech and human dignity, uh, exactly, and, uh, and the lack of constitutional procedural guarantees and the duties of responsibilities of the press, which, uh, which is not applicable to the platforms, uh, and we see that the platforms are are uh, now is getting more and more important. Probably at this moment, they are already more a more important source of news uh, on public issues than than uh, television or or the printed press, and they don't have any uh, legal nor moral expectation to serve democracy. And I, I find this uh, 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 problematic. What the future may bring, we don't know. Uh, obviously, the co-regulatory system and the uh, um, and to, just to enforcing and uh, and strengthening this co-regulatory approach uh, will continue uh, in a more nuanced way. Europe will regulate this co-regulatory uh, um, system and and procedures uh, that is uh, visible from the Digital Services Act proposal that was visible three years ago in the uh, uh, modified amended uh, AVMS directive. Uh, that is visible from the national regulations, German, Austrian, and French regulation, and Poland. Poland uh, tries to tries to move to a different direction, which I truly uh, truly admire. And they 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 aim the proposal uh, in front of the same. It aims to protect uh, free speech by banning or. Uh, 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 these private regulation of the platforms, which is a very interesting idea, and uh, I'm really interested what will happen with this proposal in the future. The Hungarian legal system is not particularly interesting, to be honest, uh, in this regard. Obviously, Hungary is a, is a member of the European Union, so uh, Hungarian uh, national rules all build on the relevant EU uh, regulation. We implemented the e-commerce directive, we implemented the AVMS directive, in, in, we, we, GDPR is uh, enforceable in Hungary. Uh, there's very few uh, case law, uh, uh, relevant case law uh, decided by the Hungarian courts or the constitutional court, mainly these this case law, which is uh, which which we have, mainly uh, comes from the adjudication of personality rights claims. That means two users of the platforms are clashing, uh, uh, and the court needs to decide whether whether free speech will uh, will be uh, stronger or whether personality rights protection will come out as a as a winner from these individual cases. One case we we have is maybe is familiar to you, the MTE and Index v. Hungary, decided by the European Court of Human Rights, uh, that there was a, a case uh, related to anonymous online comments several years ago, and, and uh, the, how the how, uh, national legal system can decide upon these online comments was a, was a big issue back then. It's not, not that big issue at the, at the moment anymore. Um, the Hungarian government last year and the beginning of this year uh, just uh, published or or just uh, um, came out with the idea of national regulation of social media platforms. As far as I'm aware, uh, now after the uh, publication of the DSA proposal, that's not a not a, a, a issue anymore. So Hungary probably will wait and and see what, what will come out from the EU uh, legislation, and then uh, we'll decide whether to uh, just to introduce their own laws or whether, whether just to, to go on with the uh, uh, relevant EU regulation. So thank you very much, uh, and I hope, I hope uh, that was, uh, that was uh, uh, informative to you, and, and um, obviously, if, uh, uh, on my, in my chapter, I will write mainly uh, about the Hungarian legal system. So if you're interested in what's happening in Hungary, probably in our uh, joint project in our book, you can uh, read uh, much more extensively about it. Thank you very much.